Good, mo- Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You heard the mmm. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So good to see you all. We want to pray, right, for a, a wonderful New Year, right, that this year be the best ever, right? Let's pray that this year be the best ever. I just want to thank all of you who participated in our Christmas Eve service and attended. I think that went really, really well. I'm sorry, I noticed, you know, my technology thing is just, I noticed that we cut off the readers who were here, and so I'm sorry about that, when you, if you see the video, but we do have the video, so that's, that's really great. Um, and I'm just glad that uh, Mary's with us on the piano, uh, Lois is pinch hitting today uh, in our reading, so thank you for that. Uh, just some reminders that we have the worship team book in the back. Uh, if you'd like to be a liturgist, just please just, just sign in. Um, we, just, we encourage uh, anyone to be a liturgist to participate in that ministry. Uh, this Wednesday is a spiritual care committee meeting, right? Uh, at 1 p.m. in Kinsale Room. Okay, great. So we have that. Um, we have some memory books here. Uh, We have a number of memory books here, so if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment to write a a thoughtful word for the families there. And this Tuesday, we continue with our Bible study at 2.30, also in King Cell Room, following uh, 1 Peter. I think those are all my announcements. Are there any other announcements? Any other announcements? Okay, well, let us begin our worship. Our call to worship is from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for the heavens. Praise him in the the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded and they were created. He established them forever, ever. He fixed their bonds, which cannot be passed. Let us pray together. Exalted God, even as the heavenly hosts sang of your glory in the night skies over Bethlehem, so we gather together to recount all that you have done for us in mercy and steadfast love. With all creation, we praise you and exalt your name forever and ever. Amen. Let us join together in singing, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear.
Please join me in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, in great love you have claimed us as your children. We confess that we have not loved you as we should. We have not loved our brothers and sisters as you intend. Forgive us, set us free from here, that we may wholly trust in you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ who shared our flesh and blood. Amen. Let's pause for a moment of silent prayer. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. Amen. Please share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Well, let's take a moment to offer up our prayers uh, today. We, we want to keep in our hearts the families of Joanne Johnson and Margaret Brienza. Uh, we also want to pray again also for a really good 2023. Amen. Yes. Kay. 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 Mm-hmm. And uh, Frank and Julie. Frank and Julie? June. 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 Okay. Anything specific or just lift them up in prayer? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Frank is in hospice. Okay. 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 Thank you. What else should we pray for today? Yes. For Phil. Philip. Is it Philip or Phil? What do you call him? Phil? Then it's Phil. If mom calls him Phil, that's what we'll call him. We call him the Ukraine. Ukraine. Okay. So let's be in prayer. Lord, we begin as we begin all things by giving thanks to you. We love you, Lord. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. Thank you especially for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I lift up everyone here. You know what's on their heart. You know their needs. Bless them, Lord. Hold them in your arms. We lift up all the residents at Friendship Village. Be with them and their family and friends. We pray for our sisters and brothers in Waterford and Alderwood, Lord. We ask you to bless them. Lord, for all the employees here, all the associates at, at Friendship Village, we ask you to continue to bless the work that they do. Very specifically, Lord, we pray for the families of uh, Joanne and Margaret. We ask you to be with them in a special way during this very difficult time. We pray that, that their memories be a blessing. Lord, we thank you for another year that has been completed. 
And we ask you to continue to bless us this year, Lord. We ask for strength and guidance that we do your will. For new insights and new discoveries, Lord. For new friendships, Lord. Lord, we pray for Kay, for Frank, and for June. We ask you to give them a spirit of peace and encouragement. We lift up especially Frank, who's beginning his journey in hospice. Lord, we lift up Phil. We ask you to continue to bless him during his journey as he continues with his procedures and Bless his mom, Lord. Lord, we lift up the people in Ukraine. We ask for peace there, peace in the world, peace in our country, peace in our very own hearts, Lord. So we lift up these prayers to you and the prayers that we keep silent in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Matthew 2, 13 to 23. Now, after they had left and the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. That was to, fi to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the Magi, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children around Bethlehem, who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the Magi. Then what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentations, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who are seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he had heard that Archelaus was ruling Judea in, in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in singing There's a Song in the Air.
Sometimes I'll hear, there's a, there'll be a hymn that we play that I selected, that I've heard for years, and people say, why'd you pick that hymn? That's so obscure. I've never heard this song before. I've never heard this. So is that interesting? Obviously, by the response, you've all heard it at least once, right? That's funny. Okay. It's about time. <laughs> it's about time. Okay. <laughs> Well, we are bombarded by voices in our heads, voices that want to help us, voices that want to hurt us, voices that inspire us, voices that want to take advantage of of us. And these voices can be people we know or strangers we meet, voices from lectures or books or magazines and websites, from television, from radio stations, from podcasts, And the voices that we should all be most suspect are are the voices of preachers on television, right? (laughs) Or in general, actually, all preachers, yeah. We live in a digital age with a barrage of constant voices 24-7. By having cell phones on us, we carry with us a global cacophony of voices yelling at us and seductively trying to pull us in, saying, listen to me, listen to me. We are so overwhelmed with information that it creates in us almost a humming anxiety and urgency that is just ever present. There are so many voices speaking to us that it is deafening. And somewhere in that ocean of voices is the soft voice of God whispering our names, calling us, seeking us inviting us to sit with him in silence. I'm reminded of the story of Martha and Mary, uh, the sisters that Jesus visited in Luke 10. And Martha's sitting with Jesus, and uh, Mary's sitting with Jesus, and Martha's busy doing what you do when people come over. And uh, Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. Now, the Greek word, Merim now can be translated as worried, but it can also be translated as anxious or to be distracted. We are worried, anxious, and distracted by many things. And if we are not careful or discerning, we can miss the voice that is above all other voices. That is the most important voice. The one voice that loves us, that cautions us, that cares for us. And if we don't listen with our hearts, we can miss it. When Herod heard about a child who was being born king of the Jews and that the Magi observed his star in the east and have come to pay him homage, Herod was not pleased. From the moment that powers and principalities of this earth sensed that God was about to be born human, they sent out to kill Christ. Jesus wasn't even born yet, and he was already on the road to Golgotha, on the road to Calvary. And Herod tried to manipulate the Magi. But God told Joseph where to go and what to do. My friends, let us never be so distracted that we can't hear the voice of God. There is so much noise in the world and in our lives 
that, are, that is competing for our minds and our hearts. Listen for the voice of God. Perhaps there isn't a King Herod who wants to kill us, but there are many things that want to pull us away from that which is good and right and holy. Listen to the voice of God. I'm reminded of the beautiful story in 1 Kings 19 when Elijah was seeking God and the word of the Lord spoke to Elijah and said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking, piece, break, breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak, went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, what are you doing here, Elijah? My friends, God's voice may not come to us as a giant wind or an earthquake or a fire or a loud commercial on television. Sometimes, in fact, most of the time, I think, God's voice comes to us in the sheer silence of our hearts. But we must nurture the spiritual discipline of silence, or we may miss his voice. And by listening to God's voice, he will help us to navigate the next step of our journey, of our decisions. No doubt it must have been terrifying that the king wanted to kill his son. But by listening to God's voice, Joseph knew what he had to do. Question. Where is God's voice telling you to go in the next step of your journey? What is God telling you to leave behind? What voices are distracting us from what is good and right and holy? Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night and went to Egypt and remained there until after the death of Herod. On that night, Joseph certainly didn't think he would have to uproot his family and travel to a different country. But Jesus was about to be killed on the orders of the leader of the kingdom. And by listening and responding to God's voice, Joseph took Mary and Jesus out of the kingdom of Judea and into Egypt. If they traveled from Bethlehem to Cairo, Egypt, it would have been 466 miles. Dublin to St. Louis, Missouri is 414 miles. You can Google it. They were refugees fleeing their own country so that Jesus wouldn't be murdered. Jesus was born because Mary listened to the voice of God and said yes. Jesus' life was spared because Joseph listened to the voice of God and said, let's go. Sometimes when we hear and respond to God's voice, there will be sacrifices and challenges. And sometimes, like Joseph and Mary, in the spiritual life, we have to change our plans and wait. We wait. And we don't like to wait. We are a restless people. We want answers now, and we want the answers that we want. But the spiritual life doesn't work on our schedule. Psalm 27 says, wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. We find out a few verses later that Joseph heard voice, God's voice again. We read in Matthew 2, 19, when Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. So Joseph and Mary returned to Israel. 
Question. Is there something in our lives that requires us to wait? That requires us to silence the voices of distraction so that we may hear the voice of God? What is restless in our hearts today that perhaps is best that we slow down and sit with God? My friends, sometimes changing plans can be upsetting or even terrifying. We thought we were going to settle down in Bethlehem, but now we have to move to Cairo. I I want you to know that you are not alone, that God is with you. God's journey is with you. God is speaking to you along the way. Listen to the voice of God. We are here in this stretch of our journey. So let us support each other as sisters and brothers in Christ. And before an angel of the Lord spoke to Joseph in a dream, the Magi were also told in a dream to leave and return to their respective countries by another way. God speaks to all people from all nations, from shepherds to Magi, from the poor to the wealthy, from the humble to the powerful. God is speaking to each of us right now. And then suddenly we read one of the most horrific tragedies in the New Testament and all of Scripture. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the Magi, he was infuriated and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under, according to the time that he had learned from the Magi. These, my friends, are the first martyrs of the church. The first people who gave their lives, albeit unknowingly, for the life of Jesus. Some Christian traditions refer to these children as the holy innocents, and even or an event that they refer to as the massacre of the innocents. Catholics, Anglicans, Lutherans, Eastern Orthodox, and Other Christian traditions commemorate this day. In the midst of something so glorious and wonderful occurs something so terrible and evil. This is a mystery, my friends. The eternal questions of good and evil. Why do bad things happen to good people and to innocent people and to these most innocent of all? Sometimes in the midst of joy, pain emerges. Just when you think you've turned the corner, another obstacle occurs. A tragedy occurs, and we ask, Lord, why? This is how dangerous it was to be a follower of Jesus at the time. And in some areas of the world, it is still dangerous to be Christian. And while we may not risk being martyred, Trying to be faithful to the teachings of Christ can sometimes feel like a battle. Sacrifices. My friends, I'm here to tell you that the Lord wept on that day. For God to see so great an injustice as a person who had so much, killed so many innocents, who had, who had so little, is an atrocity that makes even God's face turn away in pain. If there was ever a need for a savior, we see it here. And it is no different than the atrocities that occur in our lifetime. We need Emmanuel. We need God with us. Humans have been killing humans since the existence of Cain and Abel. We read in Genesis 4, when God inquires about his faithful son, he asks Cain, where is your brother Abel? Cain said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. My friends, the blood of these young martyrs, these holy innocents, baptized the ground as their blood was shed for Christ. And while we may not be called to be martyrs, We are called to be our brothers and sisters keepers. Let us listen carefully to the cries of the martyrs and learn from their lives. 
For we are called to be crucified with Christ every day. Paul writes in Galatians 2, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This is the cost of Christian love. This is the cost of Christian discipleship. This is the cost of Christmas. When the inbreaking of God, when the inbreaking of the Holy Spirit, that which is good and right and holy and divine was birthed, it unsettled the powers of the world who began to fight back. Christmas is threatening to the powers and principalities. Herod fully understood the Christmas story. He knew that this new king would overtake his kingdom and that Jesus' kingdom will overtake all kingdoms on earth. The powers and principalities of this world will always fight back against the spirit of Christ. But on a more personal level, what do we worship? What part of my life is king and queen? Am I willing to surrender all of myself to Christ? What obstacles are in the way or preventing me from surrendering to King Jesus? Listen to the words of Betsy Karkin, a Lutheran deaconess who serves at Concordia University in Chicago. She writes, at this point, the reader of this story may ask, How is it that we can go from the infant Jesus in a manger to innocent babes being torn from their mother's arms and turned into martyrs? Or perhaps some might ask, what kind of God escapes to safety and leaves helpless children to a murderer's rage? The answer is not necessarily all that satisfying to our intellect, but it is satisfying to our faith. Christ, like the church, is known for doing things differently. Satan knows this, which is why he lashes out with violence and bloodshed at the birth of this most holy child. Even in his infancy, she writes, it is clear that Christ has come to thwart the evil plans of Satan and ultimately to defeat him not in a show of great power and might, but in humility and weakness. According to Luther, humanly speaking, Herod acted wisely enough in his purpose of slaying Christ. Yet the seemingly weak and helpless infant still escapes to fulfill the prophecy. Out of Egypt I called my son, illustrating just how futile earthly wisdom and wicked schemes are against the plans of the Almighty God. My friends, this is why we struggle for justice, why the struggle for justice is one we must all undertake. Whenever there is an injustice, we must always speak out. And do not fear, for God will give us strength. Listen to the words of Psalm 118. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations surrounded me. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. They blazed like a fire of thrones. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. My friends, sometimes life has a way of surrounding us on every side. Like bees, the hardness of life can feel like fire of thorns pushing us until we fall down. But I'm here to tell you that the Lord is our strength and our might. Can I get an amen? He is our salvation. Lean on him the way the martyrs leaned on him. For it is better to take refuge in the Lord than in mortals or princes. In the name of the Lord, cut them off. 
Why did God allow such evil to occur? I don't know. There are Christians worshiping today, reading the same passage, preaching the same sermon, who live in abject poverty, surrounded by violence, needing to journey from one place to another, wanting nothing more than to live a simple and safe life. They draw strength from reading the Christmas story about how their Savior, our Savior, was born in a barn, chased by a corrupt system, and a holy family protecting their child, trying to live a simple and safe life. Our Christian siblings, as we do, draw strength knowing how the story ends. Just as God brought Israel out of Egypt, Jesus brings us out of our Egypts. Herod's wrath, no matter how evil, couldn't stop God's purposes. No matter how bad life tries to overwhelm you, God's eternal protection is always with you. How tragic it is that at the coming of the Messiah, instead of worship and celebration, came weeping in the morning. Christ will destroy sin and evil. Eternal love will conquer earthly sin. The birth of Christ will usher in a kingdom of love and mercy and reconciliation. My friends, the prophecies have been fulfilled. As Isaiah says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And so, my friends, our Savior has been born. We have seen the light, and on us the light is shining. Jesus is that light, and he is leading us out of the land of deep darkness. Amen. Amen. Let us now prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks. It is good and right and a joyful thing to give you thanks and praise always and everywhere, O God Almighty. We bless you for your continual love and care for every creature. We praise you for forming us in your image and for calling us to be your people. You sent us prophets and teachers to guide us on the journey. Above all, we give you thanks for the gift of Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, who took on human form to live and die as one of us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, who leads us into truth, defends us in adversity, and gathers us from every people to unite us in one holy church. Therefore, with the entire company of saints in all places and all things, we praise you with joy, saying together, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, that the bread which we break and the juice which we drink may be to us the communion of the body and blood of Christ. 
Grant that being joined together in him, we may attain to the unity of the faith and grow up in all things into him, Christ our Lord. As this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes from many hills into one cup, grant, O Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. On the night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, saying, Take, drink, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. The bread we eat and the cup we drink is the communion of the body and blood of Christ. My friends, everyone is welcome to this communion table. We will first distribute the bread. Please hold the bread until everyone has received it, and then we will eat together as one body. Then the juice will be distributed. We will also drink together as one body. The gifts of God for the people of God come for all things already. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ broken for us.
Christ, the blood of Christ, the blood of Christ, the blood of Christ. Take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for us. Please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of your presence and the simplicity of the Holy Name. You have fed us with the bread of life and we need us for your service. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join us with our closing hymn, Three King, Week Three Kings of Orient Are.
May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord protect us from all anxiety and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Happy New Year's. Happy